All right, we're going to take a look at this next example. Um, we have data in a table. We're going to find a trapezoid approximation. Real important to pay attention to the integral. Um, an approximation for the integral from 0 to 8. So paying attention to 0 to 8, that would encapture all of the data points right here. All right, so um, I think I'm going to go ahead and plot these points. If you're able to do the setup using trapezoid formula for this data, then go right ahead without using a picture. But for me, I find it helpful. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Where'd four go? Come back. Six, seven, eight. Just for myself, I'm going to only label those points that I have actual values for. Looks like I need to go as high as 100, so I might count by 20s. So this would be 20, etc. 40, 60, 80, 100. Just paying attention to the y values, it looks like it's strictly decreasing. This is 80, 93. Coming over here to 5, 70, that's 40, 60, 70. 6 is 62, a little bit less than 70. And 8 is 55, about right here. I'm going to connect these points. It could be concave up, concave down. I'm not sure how it goes. It doesn't matter. Those are the data points I have. I can't make up any more. All right, if I think about approximating this region, okay, delta x, well, if you think about it, I don't have equally spaced intervals, so I'm just going to put delta x varies. So the width or the height of my trapezoids are going to be different. I'm going to go ahead and inscribe the trapezoids. So the first partition is from 0 to 1. Connecting the points, I'm going to find the area in that trapezoid. The next trapezoid, look at the difference between the x's. It goes from 1 to 5. I have the left-hand side up here, the right-hand side at 5, to this data point, connect them. Okay, the difference between the next two would be the height of the third trapezoid, etc. And the height of the last trapezoid would cover a distance horizontally of 2. Go up, meet the curve, connect these two functional values. You have four trapezoids. So let's show the setup that represents the area. All right, let's see. The height of the first trapezoid is 1 times the sum of the bases. Well, the bases are 193, so I'm adding both the y values, all divided by 2. The area in this bigger trapezoid, well, the height is 4. The sum of the bases between the 1 and the 5 would be the sum of 93 and 70 divided by 2. Area in the third trapezoid, the height is 1. So at 5 and 6, I'm going to add the 70 and 62. If you're not going to draw a picture, make certain that you understand how this data plays out in the setup that represents the approximated area. And the height of the last one would be 2. Add 62 and 55. Before we move to the seven period, for all right, so at this point, you just have to um, compute the answer, uh, whatever it is. I'll touch base with you later on that. Let's move on to the final example. All right, the last example has us using the subintervals indicated by the data in the table. So I'm looking at the subintervals. That would be the difference between the x's. Um, they're uneven, unequal. Okay, we're going to find a trapezoid approximation for the number of gallons used from time equals 0 to time equals 90. So 0 to 90, that would encompass all the data points. 
and I'm going to approximate the number of gallons. And if you think about it, when I'm finding area, I'm multiplying the input units by the output units, the X units by the Y units, in this case the T units by the R of T units. And when you multiply minutes times gallons per minute, gallons per minute times minutes, okay, the area represents a change in gallons that's occurring over that first 90 minutes. All right, so I think I'm going to draw a picture real quick, unless you're comfortable not, and going right to the data, but know that that strategy of drawing a picture would always work for you. Right. Zero, 10, 20, 30. I'm only going to label the input values that I have output values for. 40, 50, 70, 90. It just helps remind me that I, can't, I don't have points, Y values for the other input values. I mean, it looks like I'm going to go up to maybe count by tens. Ten. Fifty, sixty, seventy, and I'm going to go as high as eighty. If you wanted to label your axes, that wouldn't be a bad idea either. Gallons per minute here and minutes here. I don't know about the concavity, um, so I'm just going to draw it randomly. It doesn't matter. It's just a guide to help us understand the setup. Uh, delta X again varies. I don't have equal subintervals. You don't have to write that. I'm just pointing that out, that the distance between consecutive X's changes, varies. So an integral that represents this expression or this request here. The integral from 0 to 90 of R of T dt. Um, and if you wanted to draw in the trapezoids, let me get that on here. Point should have been up there. All right, the width or height of the first trapezoid is 30. Some of the bases would be 20 plus 30. Seriously? The height of the next trapezoid would be 10, between 30 and 40, so I'm going to add the 30 and the 40. The next trapezoid would be 10 also, adding the 40 and the 55. The next height is 20, adding 55 and 65 Y values, bases, and a height of 20 here, 65 plus 70. And then uh, just use a calculator to find the final answer, and I'll check back with you guys about what you guys found here. Okay, so that's it, using the trapezoidal rule to approximate regions between a curve and the x-axis.